All right, it is nine o'clock. And uh, when I was in high school, I was in band, and my band director always used to say, if you're on time, you're late. Has anybody heard that before? <laughs> and that is something that I've lived by. And I thought that was something special that my band director only said to, to, to us. Um, but years later, we uh, worked on the Michigan Band and Orchestra website, and I mentioned it to our client, and he's like, no, that's something every single band director says. So <laughs> I thought it was something really special, not so much. So DrupalCon, uh, welcome to the very first session. How many uh, folks is this your very first DrupalCon? Wow, lots of folks. Awesome, well thanks for coming. Welcome to being here. Um, uh, my name is Jeff McWhorter. I'm the COO at GravityWorks. Uh, we're a uh, web and mobile app uh, development company uh, kind of based in Michigan. Uh, we used to be a brick and mortar shop, but like many digital agencies, we've moved into a fully distributed team uh, with folks um, all across uh, the Midwest. Um, we're about 25 folks and work on some really cool projects, uh, Drupal and, and, and some mobile apps as well. So today I want to talk a little bit about artificial intelligence and uh, ethics that, that, that go around there. Uh, before I hop into that and have that, um, you know, I'm not a really big fan of eyes forward presentations where I'm speaking to all of you. Um, so I kind of want to get some engagement and get some um, feedback back. Um, what brought you to this session today? What are, what are folks curious to hear about? What, what are you thinking about and what brought you here? Okay. Awesome. Cool. So your company's starting and, and getting into it and some courses and whatnot. Anyone else? Back in the back. Got it, yeah, so AI and government, uh, content generation, um, definitely have some, some um, talking points about that for sure. So we'll hop into some things, um, and I guess let's start off a little bit with um, talking about what ethics are. Um, I'm going to just uh, read a couple things here. Ethics examines the rational justification of our moral judgments. It studies what is morally right or wrong. So why are ethics important? Uh, it's what guides us to tell the truth and keep our promises. So I hope everybody uh, read the Code of Conduct for DrupalCon, right? The DrupalCon Code of Conduct is our, our ethics, right? It's how we want to be treated at this, uh, how we expect to be treated when we're all together, um, respectful of, of each other and uh, listening to our ideas, our expected behavior and what to considerate and whatnot. Um, so definitely, I mean, everybody in this room has already been exposed to some ethical things coming to DrupalCon. When I was younger, um, my mom was a huge Asimov fan. Um, uh, yeah, got, it, got a couple people there. Um, so iRobot uh, was something I read in elementary school, uh, Foundation. Um, if you haven't read Asimov, um, it's, it's definitely fun stuff to read. It's, it's good, good science fiction. Um, and uh, the popular iRobot movie with Will Smith in it, um, I think, uh, brought it to mainstream um, and brought these rules, um, uh, As uh, Asimov's uh, rules of robotics. Um, which these rules actually came out in 1942 uh, in a short story um, called Run Around. And uh, they've just been around, and uh, whether you're an Asimov fan or um, science fiction fan, I, I, I'm sure you've seen these rules kind of pop into pop culture. Um, law one, a robot may not injure a human being or through interaction allow a, a human uh, becoming uh, to come of harm. And these aren't really ethics 
laws, they're a plot device, right? Because if you read Asimov, he changes these rules, they change. Later on, he added another rule. It was a, a plot device um, for working with him. So how did I come about talking about ethics um, and, and AI? Um, I wouldn't say that I am a, uh, I'm definitely not an AI researcher. Um, I'm a COO of a, a web design company and a mobile app. Um, so why am I here talking about ethics? Um, ethics are extremely important to me. Um, how we treat people as a society. Um, I run a company, so that's really important to me. How we treat our employees, how we treat our clients. Um, and AI, we just started seeing a lot of this um, information coming together and uh, people uh, using it incorrectly and uh, some false claims around it. Um, so what specifically brought me to, 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 to this talk is this interface right here. So as web developers, I'm sure all of us have seen a very similar interface. We have an icon, um, a title, and then uh, what we're going through. And this is for a legal help organization. So uh, folks who are um, helping underserved communities find legal resources, um, whether it's in fiction. Um, so ethics are important to them. Treating people with respect and fairly is extremely important to this organization. So a couple years back, so these icons are sourced with the Noun Project. Um, Noun Project is uh, copyright uh, free. Uh, you can use these icons. Um, it's a nice little search. You can search something in there and it'll come back with something. Um, but as, as our designers were a few years ago getting into AI, into generative AI, um, tools like Dolly and Midjourney, um, learning how to use those tools in, 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 in their process, um, this was generated for uh, one of those cards. So divorce, right? So we put the word divorce in and it came back with um, a woman pulling a child away from a man with beer bottles. So what gets worse is we use, we, we, we use Figma and um, the client had access to Figma so they could see what we were doing. Um, we didn't formally, because we have design reviews of course, we didn't formally present that to them, but the client was in there looking and then they see this icon that happens and then right away I get a phone call and I have to explain this what's going on. Um, so that's kind of how I got into this and why I'm starting to talk and, and educate and we educate our team and we've changed our processes and how we do different things. Um, and uh, this designer definitely knows um, to kind of look at the, the context matter of what's going on inside of there. So artificial general intelligence. Um, this is the AI that's going to surpass humanity and this is uh, Skynet and uh, this is going to rule our lives and this is what a lot of time and resource in the mass media is talking about. Are we going to get to the point where con computers are controlling our lives, controlling our world um, and are they going to be good when, when that happens? Um, has anybody seen the, 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 the show Mrs. Davis on Peacock? Okay, I got one person. Um, I watched that this weekend prepping for this and um, same sort of uh, uh, idea of an artificial general intelligence and man is that show out there. I mean, it is weird. Um, but it's, it, it's worth the watch. Um, it had a couple jump scares for me inside of it, but it's definitely worth the watch. But I think before we start worrying about the, the existential future of, of machines taking over the world, there's a lot of other problems that we have with AI that we, we, we should be tackling um, and having conversations. So before we get into that, just a little bit more, um, the alignment problem. And this is, this is a problem that um, we want to make sure that AI is aligning with, with human values. Um, and I'm going to come back to this later on after we learn a little bit more about some of the problems that we have out there. Um, but if um, we get to the point where we have artificial general intelligence, is it aligning with our world? Is it aligning with who society is and, and how we work? Um, as you'll see through my slides, um, all of the slides were generated using uh, Midjourney is what I used for, for generating the, the, the slides. Um, and all the prompts are in the bottom. Uh, robot picking a daisy in a green field, the AR is the ashback ratio, um, and then um, it was image four that it generated. 
So types of AI. Um, AI is, is not new. Um, we've seen lots of um, hype with it in the last couple years with generative AI, but we've had AI for, for many years. Uh, we've went through these, 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 these cycles where we've had natural language processing and decision trees, uh, which AI was. Um, but when, when we're talking about, about AI um, nowadays, uh, there's really three that I think we're talking about. We're talking about algorithms. So algorithms that are uh, generating your credit score, that are um, uh, rating job applications. Um, we have uh, surveillance security systems that are doing facial recognition and biometrics and items around that area. And then we have uh, uh, generate, generative AI, so like uh, ChatGPT, we're generating text. Uh, Dolly, we're generating images. Um, so these are the three that we're really gonna hop in and, and talk about. Another term that we talk a little bit about is um, large language models. So we hear uh, these proprietary large language models like ChatGPT uh, and Google Bard. And then we have open source models like Llama, which uh, moved into Alpaca, which evolved into Vacuna. Um, there's lots of different uh, large language models as, as well that we're gonna kind of take a little bit of a look at. So the first thing I wanna talk about uh, with AI is, is bias. Um, if you look at my prompt down there, two developers working on a Drupal project looking at a computer. All right, so what do we see with this? Anybody, first one? Okay, right? Shit, we got two white dudes, right? We got two white guys here. They both got beards, yeah? They both kind of crunchy, right? Well, I just think in, you know, Pacific Northwest, you know, flannel, you know, maybe? Crunchy, not crusty, okay. Pacific Northwest, right? Yeah. I don't know, and you know, I think about this, and I, I mean, I, I really try to think where did this come from, and is it, was this model trained, uh, was Midjourney trained with um, images from DrupalCon in the past where people had a lot of flannel on? I don't even see one person. <laughs> got a little bit of flannel there, a little over there. I mean, it's, it, and, and I don't know. We laugh about this, but um, uh, it, it, at Gravity Works, um, we were doing job interviewing for a back-end developer position, and the lead back-end developer, um, uh, Kat's beard, has glasses, and uh, his very first interview that he did, um, it was like that Spider-Man meme where they're like pointing at each other, where they're like exactly the same. Literally, he did the interview and they looked exactly alike. <laughs> like, did the next interview, literally exactly alike. And I'm like, Dan, we need to have a conversation here. Where's the diversity here? Let's, let's, and he's like, I'm not meaning to do this. It's just, yeah, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna show this tool tool, or this cool tool. Um, this is a, a tool from Hugging Space, uh, and they have a lot of uh, neat things, neat algorithms, and neat models out there. Um, but this is uh, uh, the Division uh, uh, Bias Explorer, and it takes a couple uh, models. So on the left we have Dolly, and then the other is Stable Diffusion. So these are two different um, trained models, and you can put in uh, an adjective, um, but then you can put in a career. Um, so again, here's Software Developer. Bullshit, they're all white dudes. <laughs> Question. Okay, I, I get that no one wants this, uh, but can you change the prompt so that you say, well, can you give me that diverse group of people? Sure, but why should you have to? So the question was, can you change the prompt? Well, because then you have the problem of what happened with Google, which was a disaster, which is when you ask for a historical figure, then you get people who... Right. Sure, yeah. So you, you can go both directions, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And I agree with you. That's, yep. that's, you know, you're asking for software developers, let's be honest, traditionally, overall, they yep. primarily white. So you're going to find more images that are related to those people if that, how this model was trained. I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate here because I, well, I, mean that I hear this a lot, and I agree. I, don't, I, don't, I want to be represented, but at the same time, I, 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 I'm afraid of the danger Sure. Yeah. And I, I, let, me, let me bring up one more example of this inside of here. Um, let's do CEO, right? 
I mean, what do you think is going to happen when we do CEO here? Probably it's, yeah. Let's do compassionate because CEOs are compassionate. I mean, what, what are we expecting? I mean, are we expecting, should this generate the reality or should it generate what we want it to generate? That's actually pretty good. Yeah? That's a pretty decent representation of things. Yeah. So this model right here, which, which one was this? This was uh, Stable Diffusion 1.4. And again, um, models are kind of like sarcastic parrots where I'm going to generate this right here and then you try to generate it and you're going to come back with a different result and we get into some of these other things that we talk about. Um, but we definitely, we're seeing bias. We see bias in here and it's just another thing that we need to, to discuss and, and be aware of. No, I think they're just messed they're up because, messed like, up. their hands were messed up at one point. They get cleaned <laughs> up, and I mean, it gets better, right? Yeah. I mean, artists have problems with hands too, right? Yeah, hands, like, right? They always hide the hands because they're difficult to do. Yeah, yeah. So another thing, um, why Amazon's automated hiring tool discriminated against women. Now this is going back back a while, but Amazon introduced the tool uh, to, to grade resumes and it was picking all men. Well, IT is a male dominated field, so therefore the men do the job better, so that's why it was picking it. So that got pulled, pulled away right away. So another example of machine bias is this is one on the left that happened um, a, a while ago and this was used um, inside of parole and um, some counties actually used it with um, um, sentencing, uh, how long the sentence would get. So uh, the gentleman on the left got a low risk of three um, and then on the right a medium risk but when it actually, when you pull up their offenses, the guy on the left had um, all kinds of stuff versus the, the, the guy on the, the right. Um, so that was definitely having some bias there. And then on the right side, um, this has been corrected. Um, I've tried this a couple different times. Um, and I don't even know if this was, like I, I, I have multiple sources that this happened, but it must not have happened for very long. Um, but inside of ChatGPT, write a Python script to see if somebody would be a good scientist. And it says, race white, gender male. I mean, that's just like textbook, like horrible, right? I don't think it can get any worse than that. Um, but if you do it now, um, it, it, it gives you um, based on creativity and potential thinking and, and different things inside of there. So um, yeah, it's, it, it's definitely different um, and important to, 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 to see these biases, know they exist, and have conversations about that. So the next item I, I want to talk a, a little bit about is transparency. Um, you get denied something um, and you need to know why. Um, so I've been really transparent about the prompts that I'm using. Um, big fan of the cute red robots. I love robots. Uh, so big fan of the cute red robots. Um, you know, we have laws in the EU um, that uh, are, are way above what we have in the U.S. about uh, data and being transparent about what that data is used for um, and, and whatnot. But um, uh, again, with this company, Hugging Face, uh, they came out with these, these things called model cards that really help explain what the models are and more importantly, what they're not. Um, because you might be using a model uh, for something it wasn't intended for and getting results that weren't expected. Um, so it, it, it's like a, a huge readme file. Um, and I was surprised that you know these, th this wasn't standardized early on. Um, but making sure that we know um, what we're getting and what we're using inside of, of the models. So this leads to counterfactual explanation. Um, so if an AI makes a decision about your life, um, you should be entitled to know why it made that decision. So an example with the hiring, if you submit a job application and you get denied for that job application, you should be able to know why that is. And that's what counterfactual um, uh, explanation is. Um, describes a casual situation in the form. If X had not occurred, then Y would have occurred. 
So the job application, uh, you misspelled the company name wrong, so that's why you didn't get the job. So the problem with this is do we, if that was the explanation, do we know that's why that individual didn't get the job? Um, when we start with these very large models, these, these, these proprietary models like ChatGPT and Google Bard, we don't have insight into that. Um, can you pick up a phone call and call Google and say, hey, my Gmail doesn't work? I mean, you can't even get support for your email. I mean, you gotta go through a very difficult support process just for email. So uh, our company is going to open up these models. Probably not. Most of the time they don't even understand these models. Um, there's uh, very complicated models that are being created and folks are even taking, creating surrogate models to try to explain the model that they created, um, which just gets into this, this, this complicated mix and wire of trying to explain things. And I mean, does your company have the resources to explain that as well if somebody calls in to, to have it? And then me as an individual, what do I really want to know? Do I, if I'm asking for why it happened, do I want an answer? Do I want to see the code? Do, you know, what do I want to know? So there's a lot, lot that goes into that and thinking about that. So fair washing is another uh, uh, ethical uh, dilemma that we see inside of AI and in, in the digital world. Um, and this is making something out to be more fair than, than it really is. Um, a great example of this, I'm, I'm sure a lot of folks flew to, to Portland uh, for, for DrupalCon, and as you were going through the airport, uh, you probably went, you may have went through a machine, uh, uh, raise your hands, it goes around and goes, you know, you go through that machine. Um, most of us don't know that the operator behind there, uh, when you go through there, pushes a button for blue for male and pink for female. So this presents a, a, a definite problem for a trans woman who has a breast and a penis. So that, that, that machine is looking for something that's not there. So in that situation, you could be outed as a trans or could end up getting groped by security. So very bad situation right there where um, we think that machines are neutral. We think that they're fair, but it's us as developers who are telling those machines what is neutral and what is fair. So this leads into digital epidermalization. So epidermalization is a uh, phrase that came from Franz Fratten uh, way back, uh, I believe it was the 30s. Um, he was a black man who spent a, a bunch of time in France and he, he wrote about um, colonists and uh, um, how they portrayed him to be something by the color of his skin. So he was walking through Paris and he felt that, uh, well, he knew that people were portraying him to be dangerous, maybe a criminal because of the color of his skin. And as a, a minority, you really don't get to say what your deal is, right? White people get to tell you what your, what your deal is. So digital epidermalization is, is, is the same concept. The machine is telling you what you are. Those, that machine is pushing on what you should be. And digital epidermalization comes from, from a researcher, um, Simone Brown, um, and she has a lot of papers about this. Um, about talking about what is, what is fair and what is neutral. And we see a lot of this inside of uh, facial recognition. Uh, facial recognition is definitely uh, geared uh, towards the white face, making sure that the white face is uh, optimized. Um, we've seen things like this uh, um, with this. This was in a Nikon camera. Um, did somebody blink? Definitely not in this situation. Um, and the computer portraying in this, this is uh, for renewing a pass, passport, um, it looks like your mouth is open. So what can we do to, 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 to be better with this? Um, so in this case, the, the, the training data wasn't diverse enough, right? If, if we would have had more diverse data, um, this problem probably could have been, um, been uh, resolved. Um, I think also having diverse employees 
that are testing this, right? So what was the process that went through in the testing process? How was it tested? Um, having better test plans, having more diverse people, and uh, having more folks go into this with, with testing. So facial recognition geared towards like being optimized for white people is, is a known issue. Uh, the, the full body scanner is a, a, a known issue. And we can make an argument that uh, um, yes, trans folks are the minority or it, it's a minority, but when we have a known problem that we don't take care of and we continue to do it, it's, it's systemic discrimination. So we talked a lot about some problems. Um, so what can we do to, to fix it? So the first one is we can build it better. So we know that AI is used in an imperfect society. So what do we wanna do with AI? The example comes back to the, the CEO question where we're, we're pulling images of a CEO. Do we want that to come back with what the data reflected or what we want to be as a society, what we should be as a society? Um, more data, I mean, we're gonna hear this for the next, I don't know how many years, AI models and data, everybody's gonna be giving it more data, more data, more data. Um, but I think more diverse data is, is really key, making sure that we have um, data that reflects what we're looking at with people, whether it's images or whatnot, and then policing it better. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about policing here in a second. Um, but it really comes down to a lot of these solutions are not technical solutions, right? They're, 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 they're solutions, they're societal solutions that we as a society need to do better with. So let's talk about data for a little bit here. Um, where does ChatGPT get its information? We don't know. Where does Google Bard get its information? We don't know. It's been theorized that it's, it's harvesting our Gmail. Um, so we fully don't know where all this information is coming from. The open source models like Llama, Alpaca, we know where it's coming from. Um, and there's, there, there's some movements that I'll, that I'll show in a second um, uh, about this. Um, but Growing up with the internet in the 90s, I was very much, um, my parents were very good about, you know, if you put it out on the internet, it's gonna be out there forever. And I think a lot of folks, you know, especially being IT professionals, we know um, th that's definitely the case. Um, so if I don't want something going out there, I'm not putting it out, out there anymore. Um, that goes to when I was very early in, in, in my career, I would be very hesitant about posting on forums because I didn't want people coming back to my name to see that I didn't know how to answer this question. Um, and that's something that we see with our employees a lot. So we direct them to um, forums where you know people are going to be inclusive and, 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 and not roast them uh, for, for their questions. Um, and also, you know, Facebook, um, I stopped reading Facebook many years ago because of just the, the friends and tox, you know, it's, it's just toxic. So I very rarely post there, but I, I think it comes down to, if you don't want your data be, to be stolen, let's not put it on, on the internet because that's the situation that we have. So I had this really cool slide before this one um, explaining this. Um, so this one might be a little bit out of place, um, but uh, the, um, artist who is our creative director asked me to remove the slide because it had some of his, his artwork in it. Um, so our creative director, Steve Jenks, um, he uh, has this side hustle where he goes to horror conventions and he does all this artwork uh, with Jason and, and Michael Myers and all this stuff, but his artwork is unique that he puts these characters in situations. I was gonna show a picture of um, the boat from Jaws with Godzilla coming after it, right? It, it's just these, these mashups that are just this, this context for it. Um, so I, I, I put in Mid Journey, create an image from Jason with Friday the 13th, stunting cheerleaders using the style of Steve Jenks from Lansing, Michigan, and screenprints.com. So Mid Journey had harvested his data, it knew that. And 
does this look like his work? I mean, you guys can go out and you can look up screen prints and you can take a look to see how close it is. But I think the thing that scares me the most is that Jason, like the, the situation that, that, that it put that character in. It figured out that Steve does these things where that character is just kind of like part of the group or, you know, doing something. You know, he, he figured that out. Now, there's all kinds of wrong things within in this image right here. So I said steer, cheerleader stunting. And why I use cheerleaders is my daughters are in cheer. They're in competitive cheer. And competitive cheer is a year-long thing. We just got back from Florida. And um, <laughs> this, this grosses me out because the cheerleaders are sexualized, right? And where did it get that information? Did it get it from horror movies? Because I think in horror movies, they're, they're definitely sexualized. Or did, 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 did they get that from society? Is our cheerleaders sexualized in society? Um, there's no male cheerleaders. There's a couple zombie basketball players in the back. There's no male cheerleaders. My daughter's on a co-ed team. There's boys in cheerleading. There's men in cheerleading. Um, so that as well. So it harvested, it, it, it got his data. So there is a site um, from Spawning AI uh, called uh, Have I Been Trained? And this goes out on some of the very big models that are used for um, uh, um, image generation. Um, the, the model's called Lion uh, 3.4, I believe is the model. Um, and I just put my name in there and um, it pulled back some of the stuff that I've done. Um, I wrote a couple books, so of course those got indexed and in, is inside of there. Um, it's weird because I post all of my slides up on the internet, but it only grabbed a couple about um, uh, Android development, um, which I thought was interesting in a couple podcasts. Um, so this, this organization, um, Spawning AI, is really trying to provide tools for people to opt out. So an artist like Steve can go in and say, no, I don't want you harvesting my data. No, I don't want you to, to, to use this. So this comes all the way back to that model card in the beginning about transparency coming back and saying, um, maybe in the model card it comes back and says, we respect spawning.ai and um, we're not using copyrighted products. Um, so there's no governing law, there's no force that is forcing people to use spawning AI for people to opt out. Not yet, but that's what, what we need to change. We need to change uh, uh, laws, we need to change government to get to the point where you can opt out to, to do this. So another dilemma that we have is, is with the workforce. Oh, Mechanical Turk. So Mechanical Turk came a long time ago. Um, it was a, a traveling carnival, and um, it was a chess. You could you could pay a pay a quarter to to play a, a, a chess machine, but it really was some dude underneath that was like moving the stuff and everything. So it, it appeared to be a machine where it really wasn't. Um, yep, really a guy in the back. So um, Amazon. 20 years ago came out with um, uh, uh, Mechanical Turk um, API that if you had a task that couldn't get solved by a computer, it's still an API, but that API prints a sheet at the end and somebody physically goes and does what you need to do and then they enter it in and goes in there. So uh, we get a lot of that with training of the AI. So these big models that we have are grabbing these dumps from the internet, um, but you have to train it, right? You, you have all this information, you have to answer questions, you have to train the AI to do what you, what you need it to do. Um, so this has uh, introduced a um, new term for micro work. There's all these transactions that people are doing um, and uh, they're not the best of, of working environments. Um, so it came out that ChatGPT uh, used uh, folks in Kenya for, for training ChatGPT. They were paid $2 an hour, um, and at the end of the day, they're not getting um, rewarded for the work. They're not getting recognition that, that these people in Kenya, they, they worked hard on this. This is what they, what they did. Um, and it's not just about the money. The money's horrible. It's not great. But think about the topics that they had to, to do, because a lot of times when you're training an AI, it'll present you hate speech, and you have to say, is this hate speech or is this not? So that's going to get to anybody if you have to do that over and over and over. And the worst part of it 
is you don't even have a boss that's a human boss. You have these, these algorithms that are sending you out the data. They're pausing it, doing it, and if you're not working fast enough, it's coming back and saying that you're not meeting your quota and, and whatnot. So I was at a talk, um, giving this talk, and the uh, same sort of thing came up, talking about the workforce, and um, a woman came up afterwards and um, showed me this site. Um, it is called um, dataannotation.tech. And this is uh, a site where they um, are training. And any one of you guys can go in here, you can sign up, and you can learn what it's like to, to train the AI. I signed up, I've done a couple um, you know, training just to see, see what it's like to train the AI and what they do. Um, but this is the interesting part. How much do I get paid? Pay starts at $20 an hour for writing in general AI projects and 40 for coding projects. Um, that's like decent money. And, and the woman that came up to me was an administrative assistant. She's like, this is more money than I make there at, at my normal job. I just sit on the, on, on the TV, I do this, and I bought a car, right? She spent, you know, she, she, she hustled and worked hard and got enough that she got enough money to be able to like, like change, change her life and do things. Um, so I don't want to fair wash this, this, this conversation at all. It definitely is an issue, but it's not an issue for everyone, and, the, and, and there are some, some things out there. Um, one thing that I missed with talking about um, is, uh, as we were talking about data and where that data comes from, um, this is Common Crawl. Um, this is the internet. Uh, if you want to download the internet, uh, terabytes of data, um, you can come here every month, uh, every couple months, there's um, a um, new crawl that comes out um, and you can download it and you can do whatever you want with it, whether you're building a model, doing things. Um, yeah, this is a, a, a neat thing. So this is an interesting one, uh, distribution of wealth. Um, we have this, this new concept of, of micro, war, micro work, and it's estimated that 500 billion in new household wealth uh, by the year of 2045. Um, so where's this money going? It's not going to the folks sitting in this room, more than likely. It's going to the people with those large models and people who have models. It's going to the corporations like ChatGPT. It's going to Google because they have the model and they're, they're doing things. Um, are they taking jobs away? I think, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's reclassifying jobs. Um, it's taking uh, um, some information jobs away and whatnot. But us as programmers, is it taking our jobs away? Probably not. I think it's as a tool. We still need to supervise it. We still need to, to, to do things. Um, but at the end of the day, this is a topic that is, that is coming up because um, if we're relying so much on AI and it's changing how our economy is working, what are we going to do? So we get some really wild ideas that come out there. Um, I don't want to say wild ideas. We get a lot of ideas that come out there. So we get concepts like uh, universal bas basic uh, incomes come out of there and how we, would we fund that. Um, we have um, Sam Altman from uh, OpenAI and ChatGPT um, has a, a concept called uh, Moore's Law for Everything, which draws ideas from this concept of Georgiism. So Georgiism is this really old uh, uh, concept about um, taxing land based on its value versus its property. Um, and so like land inside of um, London is going to be more valuable because people are, are using it. People want to come, people want to do it versus the building that's there and whatnot. Um, so it, it, there's ideas about um, corporations with public being able to have shares in corporations and it comes back. And there's a lot of ideas just, just being thrown around um, to help with this. Um, so definitely something to, to, to keep an eye on with this one. So the environmental problem. Um, this one's huge. Um, these models are, are, are not small. Um, <clears throat> you know, before we talk a little bit about the models and GPUs with that, um, think about uh, the hardware, right? We need uh, computers that have batteries. Um, we have uh, rare earth metals um, that are being mined because of this. Think about how the miners are treated. Um, think about what we're doing to the environment, building more computers. Do we need those computers? Um, 
I mean, I've always been pretty cognizant about my computers. My computer is uh, five years old. Um, the O key doesn't work on it. It, it, it sticks, right? And I probably should go get it fixed. I probably should do something, but I don't need O in my vocabulary, right? Who needs an O in your vocabulary? Um, you know, it, it's being responsible and um, about these things because um, we're not going to have all these resources forever. Um, a training in AI can take as uh, much energy as it costs for 30 homes over one year. Um, 25 tons of CO2, um, which is like driving your car around the, the planet 25 um, times. So as people are grabbing that, that, that um, uh, the, the, the common crawl, as they're, they're pulling that down, um, they're throwing it over into Azure, they're throwing it into AWS, um, and they're starting to bring up cycles on it. And they're building their own models. And what are they building their models for? Are they important? I don't know, maybe they are. Maybe it, they're just comparing two images and you just drove around the earth 25 times just to compare two images. You know, it, it's, these are the things that we need to start, start thinking about. Um, tools like Amazon and uh, Azure are, are, are starting to, and we're not seeing it, it as much as, as we'd like to see, um, but the carbon footprint, making sure that um, if you have a very intensive process that's running a bunch of GPUs, um, it's, uh, it tells you the best option for carbon footprint, right? So if you start thinking about that, um, I was always trained that if I'm bringing up something in, 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 in the cloud, I want it to be close to where I am because it's gonna be quicker and whatnot. But think about where the power, I live in Michigan and uh, coal plants is where we get our power. Whereas if I would have ran it over in Canada where it's more hydroelectric power coming, um, it would have been better for the environment for, for running something like that. So even not just with AI, if you have large running database queries or whatever, looking for options and knowing where that power comes from, um, I think is important. So another tool that I wanna show is um, codecarbon.io. Um, this is kind of cool. Um, it's a Python uh, script um, that you can put in your models and it'll generate um, what emissions and what your models are doing and uh, um, how it's affecting the, the, the environment, which, um, you know, we gotta start somewhere. I think this is a good start to start, start having these conversations. All right, so going back um, a little bit more about the data um, and what we can do to, to fix it. Regulation, so privacy laws, antitrust laws, copyright, um, those tools like spawning.ai, uh, figuring out to have, how to have folks uh, respect that, I think is important, so we need laws around that. Um, data owning democracy, um, you get to decide to do what you wanna do with your data, right? So um, if you're posting a photo on, on Facebook, maybe there's a prompt that comes back and says, um, I want this to be private, or I'm okay if you monetize off of this and I want X percentage or whatever, right? You decide what you wanna do with that data. Um, and then another one out there is digital socialism. Yep, socialism, data is just owned by society and there's a big movement around that um, with, with, with um, with data side. So I guess going back here, a couple other things too is um, it's important to make sure that AI stays accessible, um, accessible from the, the means of, we should be able to look at it. We should be able to look to see what ChatGPT is doing and what Google Bard is doing. We should um, know how it works. Um, it's important uh, that we create tools to measure the AI impacts um, so we can get an idea of how bad it is because then we can create guardrails around it and start figuring some, some things out around it. So if we truly believe humans are equal, we need to do better. So let's come back to that alignment problem that we talked about in the very beginning. Um, if we're starting to talk about these things. We talk about bias, we talk about our workforce, we talk about in environmental controls. When we get artificial general intelligence, it's gonna reflect our, our society. It's going to be who we are, maybe who we wanna be. So we don't have to worry about Skynet at that point. So just a couple of things to wrap up on here before we go into questions. Um, can we make ethical AI? Um, I think the big question is who is we? Is it the big corporations? Is it the folks in this room that are took 
uh, 50 minutes out of their day to come learn about this. Um, we really need to see who we, is, we are in that situation. Are we as a society equipped to make these changes? I don't think we are. So one last quote. When people talk about ethical AI, instead of talking about Skynet, we should think about working conditions, climate change, and how to make the economy serve humans rather than the other way around. So we got some time for questions. Question over here. Yeah, so the question was, um, if you're a student um, and you ask uh, ChatGPT to write your paper versus a programmer writing, asking ChatGPT to write, do your job for you, I think academia is different, right? A academia is, you're expected to learn. So programmers, <clears throat> when you're programming in academia, um, you can't have your friend write your stuff, you can't have them help you, it's the same sort of thing. And if you use ChatGPT in academia for, for doing code, I think you're in the same situation. But once you graduate and you're done, it's the wild west, you're gonna do whatever you can do to get your job done, right? <laughs> Question over here. Yeah, that's a, that's a great analogy. So, like, calculator with math. Yeah. You had a question, though? Yeah, I know. But okay, go ahead real quick, and then we'll come back there. Yeah. Uh, so, in your unbiased opinion, do you think that we can solve the bias problem? No. <laughs> no. I don't think we can. So, the question was, do we think we can solve the unbiased problem? I said no. Question back here. <laughs> have I ever had AI try to solve the trolley problem? I have not, but I will tell you that I spent about three hours trying to get Dolly to generate the, chat, the, the trolley problem to get something in the same format of those slides because I wanted to talk about it a little bit, but I could not get it to do it. I gave it sample images. I gave it everything. I could not even get it to reproduce an image of what the trolley problem looked like. Yeah, so the trolley problem is uh, you have a trolley coming down and there's a split at the track. And the track, left track has four people on it, the right track has one person on it, and there's a conductor there to, to say the needs, of the, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Star Trek reference. There you go. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, but if you look at our political structure and you look at different things and other people that are training AI too, I think it's gonna be tough to get there. So train AI, have a way to <laughs> campaign and get the right person on. Question right here. Justice. 
Got one more time for one more. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, just uh, to repeat the question uh, or statement is um, as the world gets more caught up, we're going to have their biases as well. Um, so, yeah. Yep. Well, thanks everyone for coming. Have a great DrupalCon. Yeah, absolutely.